Well, I'm sure you'll agree, generosity is a very important aspect in living in the will of God. And as you've noticed, I personally take this very seriously. However, we must look at what God expects of us in view of the total biblical story. We must not take scriptural statements and comments out of context. For example, let's consider one of the major errors when it comes to teaching people to be generous. And let me be very direct. The total biblical story does not teach prosperity theology. Simply stated, this doctrine teaches that God wants us to be rich, to have a lot of material possessions. And if we give in certain ways, God will reward us even manyfold. Now, it's true, of course, that God promised material prosperity to the children of Israel when they came into the land, if they obeyed him in every respect. This is very clear in the Old Testament, but this literal promise is unique to the children of Israel. It was never given to the apostles, nor was it taught by the apostles when they ministered to New Testament Christians. Think for a moment. If material prosperity was promised to the apostles, they would have died very wealthy men. They gave up basically everything. Some left very lucrative businesses to follow Christ and to carry out the Great Commission. The Apostle Paul particularly would have had a bank account that would have matched some of the wealthiest men in the Roman Empire. In fact, while he was in prison in Rome, he had significant needs. But after receiving some material gifts from the Philippians, he wrote to this church and he said, I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. Paul then went on to give that wonderful testimony about his experiences as an apostle and church planter. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All of the apostles probably died with virtually the clothes on their backs. Even at the beginning of his ministry, Peter said to the poor beggar in Jerusalem, I do not possess silver or gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. These observations, of course, raise a very practical question. Does God bless us when we're generous? The answer is a definite yes. Just as he blessed the Macedonian Christians who gave out of poverty. But the blessing was not material prosperity. If you look carefully at the biblical story, the blessing was supernatural grace to continue to give out of what little they had. There's no evidence they ever became wealthy. And the same is true today in poverty-stricken places in the world. Let me address another Old Testament requirement namely tithing, a term which means 10%. The children of Israel were to give two tithes annually and then a third tithe every three years. The first tithe was to care for the spiritual leaders in Israel. The second tithe, to travel to Jerusalem to worship in the temple. The third tithe, to care for people in need. And then special will offerings to meet special needs. To understand God's will for his people in the Old Testament, we must remember that Israel was to function as a self-contained society. God's plan would care for all of their needs and more. And this, of course, changed when they were under Roman rule in the New Testament setting. They then paid taxes to the Roman government. Today, we live under the New Covenant. Most of us live within various governmental systems that require taxation. Now, personally, I believe Israel's first tithe, giving at least 10% of our income and even beyond, is a great model and a goal for every Christian who lives in a culture like ours. And when we do, we're supporting God's work in the world, and especially those who give full time to the ministry. My wife and I have tithed on our gross income since we were married. When we started with very little, and God has met our needs all these years, not always our wants, but it's been a great blessing in our lives, supporting God's work. But as a pastor for many years, I know Christians who would 
love to give 10% of their income to the Lord. But because of their own mistakes, because of tragedies, because of human circumstances, they're not able to meet this standard at this particular moment in their lives, even though they want to. We must understand it takes time and diligence to be able to give systematically and proportionally, as God says we should. I sincerely believe God will bless this kind of prayerful goal. But one thing is certain. God does honor and bless those who are generous. And this kind of giving is not necessarily measured by silver and gold. It also involves our time, our talents, and the way we present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. May God bless you as you interact with the questions on page 192, beginning with a very thought-provoking question. Why do people get unusually uncomfortable when they hear messages on money? Well, I'm sure you'll come up with several very interesting answers. God bless.